As a young professional, supply chain and logistics has always fascinated me. I'm an industrial engineer by education and the dynamics of these interconnected systems, the impact across time and geography, one decision can make on the whole of the system, on the whole of the supply chain has always intrigued me. Uh, supply chain management uh, involves the sourcing of materials, the production and manufacturing, the transport, the shipping, the delivery, and also the retailing into different channels where the customer might find their product or service. Uh, supply chain is important because it's a big driver of cost for organizations. In the commercial sector, it is important because it impacts the bottom line. But in the humanitarian sector, where I come from, it is also important because it can make the difference between life and death. It is important to make sure that supplies are delivered to the right people at the right time, with the right quantities and at the right cost. Imagine, for example, if a vaccine was discovered for COVID-19, but if we didn't have the ability to manuf mass manufacture it, distribute it and roll it out globally. If these systems did not exist, then the manufacturing of the vaccine, the discovery of the vaccine itself wouldn't have been uh, a great benefit to, to humanity. Imagine also the complexity of manufacturing this vaccine, not only the actual uh, mass production, of it, but also the sourcing of each component of that vaccine from all over the world and the different organizations and the different uh, facilities that have to be uh, also involved. This gives you an idea of how complex and interconnected uh, we all are. As Logisticians in the commercial sector have uh, a big job. They are trying to manage supply and demand. They're trying to build inventory. They're trying to make sure uh, deliveries are done correctly and in the right quantity. And they're trying to also minimize the cost. But human humanitarian logisticians have even a bigger job. Imagine doing all of that with uh, so much uncertainty. You don't know when a disaster is going to hit. You don't know what the affected population is going to be, uh, how big the affected population is going to be. You don't know what their needs are uh, going to be given a specific scenario of disaster. You also don't know what kind of infrastructure is going to be left over after the, the disaster or what kind of equipment or personnel or resources you are going to have. In addition, this happens mostly in developing countries where uh, challenges like fraud and corruption, uh, utilities and customs are uh, also present. So I really believe humanitarian logisticians are superheroes that uh, are you know, delivering in high uncertainty and that are very, very uh, flexible building their supply chains to become very resilient uh, to respond very quickly and more increasingly now at lower costs. Supply chain philosophy is basically built around saying a chain is as strong as its weakest link. So in supply chain philosophy, we want to ensure that the bottom line and the profitability is achieved in every level of the supply chain. Supply chains are profitable if they are profitable for everyone, for all the organizations, but also for each of the organizations, uh, of the people in these organizations, and to the beneficiary or the customer who is centric to the supply chain uh, philosophy. Regardless of how, how much profit, for example, a distributor is making, they cannot still be in business if their supplier falls. We need to make sure that the profit or the benefit or the value is distributed all across. This calls for a high level of collaboration and communication. 
We have to remember that supply chain management is a practical, not an academic field. It was conceived in the factory or shop floor and the battlefield. Its origins can be tra traced to the military. So there's no surprise that women did not have much of a voice or a presence in that field and continue to have challenges to enter and remain in supply chain management uh, fields. They are uh, similar to any technical field, outnumbered and uh, unheard uh, even sometimes. Even when, uh, even when organizations are overall gender balanced, we don't see that translating into supply chain and logistics teams. Sometimes it is well balanced at the entry level, but the challenge is at senior and uh, executive levels. So basically companies, we understand that companies are failing to attract, retain and recognize these female supply chain uh, talents. Uh, globally, women account to 40% uh, of supply chain students in universities. But if we look at Fortune 500 companies, only 5% of them are in top positions. In its heart, supply chain philosophy revolves around balance, not dominance. So a leadership style that is mostly associated with females and female leaders. Collaboration, negotiation, multiple stakeholder management, are key skills, also uh, majorly defined as female strong suits. We often say that we shape our supply chains and then our supply chains start to shape us and the reality. The customer or the beneficiary is really in the heart of that supply chain. So bringing in that female uh, viewpoint is very, very important and central. Women can bring in a better understanding of the needs and a more holistic approach to meeting them. Women can cater for uh, the inclusion uh, of uh, female beneficiaries, children and families and communities. So it's very important to bring those women into a decision-making uh, positions. Another example that comes to mind during the distribution and rollout of vaccines is looking at access women might have to vaccination centers and health centers. A women's health has been um, in the spotlight for a few decades now, but also it was uh, later uh, that this came into the conversation. Women in marginal marginalized communities might not, might not have transport, might not have access because of cultural reasons to these uh, centers, might have uh, questions, concerns, uh, and fears that would require um, a female um, uh, nurses or female staff to answer. And they might not generally have the same uh, ability to protect themselves as uh, and their children, of course, as uh, their male counterparts. This is where the inclusion of a female viewpoint becomes important uh, because this is the context is very, very subjective. And the inclusion of females would definitely, even if the male logisticians, as good as they are, uh, they would fail to see uh, the uh, context from a female point of view. It becomes very important that we include women around the decision-making table when we are designing services that are targeting them. This is why I'm passionate about supply chain and logistics. It is the driving force behind uh, shaping our realities and the systems we uh, exist and operate within. And it can definitely benefit from more female participation and leadership.